again. So today we're doing a science project that I don't know if it's gonna work. We're going to try to dye this fabric yellow using some goldenrod flowers. And um, I've never tried anything like this before, so it might be a complete fail. So I'm using cotton muslin just because it's cheap and that makes my life easier. If you want to see more content like this and maybe me trying different colors and different materials, like and subscribe and let me know. Um, leave a comment below if you have any specific recommendations. I'm really looking into black walnut shells. That looks fun. So let's do this. I got my fabric, which is just, as I said, white cotton muslin, pre-washed it. And I have alum, which was much more hard to find than you would expect, but I managed it. And we are going to boil the alum with the fabric so that it is ready to take the dye, if I am understanding this correctly. And that's going to be in this pot. And then we have the second pot where we're going to boil the flowers and make a nice little soup to make dye. And then, if all goes according to plan, we're going to pour the dye on top of the fabric and maybe make it yellow? We will find out. While we are doing these first steps of dissolving the alum in the water and soaking the fabric within that alum juice, I would just like to credit a few people who inspired me to make this project. The first of those people is Sewing Through the Past, who's another amazing sewing channel here on YouTube. She's made, I think, two or three videos about natural dyes, and they really inspired me to come up with my own and try that out as well as a blog post which gave me the instructions on how to do this which I will have linked below. I did divide my fabric into two pieces in order to make it move around the pot a little easier. I just thought that would be um, most beneficial and at this point I realized I had not nearly enough water. And there is the goldenrod all chopped up and starting to boil up. It was a little dead by the time I got it. My cousin and aunt were super kind and picked all of this for me. It was about a week period before I got to it, so it died a little bit. And there it goes, starting to look a little like pee. Okay, so we strained all the water out of this one, and now we're gonna pour the dye on top of that, hopefully not getting any of the flowers in there, but who knows, we'll see. My mom also helped a ton with this project. She's actually the one pouring the liquid. So thanks mom, love you. And now that that dye is in with the fabric, I just stirred it for a full hour. Got a really good arm workout. I don't think this was technically necessary, but I was very afraid of it getting really bad spots if I stopped at any point. So I just stirred it for an hour. I'm also just trying to get all the bubbles out, so that is what weird things I'm doing with these utensils. <laughs> And 
and then we can rinse it out. I decided that since it was natural and there was no other real good place to do this, that I was just gonna dump it into the lake. I'm 90% sure this was an okay decision since goldenrod is native to this area. So we're just rinsing it in the lake. It seemed like, why not use the historical method, you know? It was really hard to reach. The dock is way too far above the water for this to be have been practical. And then that just got hung up to dry. Okay, now to actually sew in this. Since it was all crunched up in the pot, I had to go over it pretty thoroughly with an iron to get the fabric to be flat again. There were also all these little stringy bits that I had to trim off, which took longer than I'm willing to admit. But once that was all finished, we could get started measuring our skirt panels. I just took my measuring tape and kind of guesstimated how long I wanted it to be, and I added a few inches in case I wanted to trim it down later. And I measured and clipped my fabric and then ripped it down the grain line. I'm just using the entire length of the fabric and I'm using that bottom piece that I cut off to make the skirt um, how long I want it for, for my button placket, my pockets, and the waistband. Um, here I'm just ripping one of my two halves of fabric in half so that I have two even front pieces.
off screen, I did some embroidery. This was off screen because for some reason those video files got corrupted and hella glitchy. Uh, but basically I just measured out where I wanted my buttons to be and embroidered between those so that they're kind of staggered with the buttons which you will see later. Then I rinsed out my water soluble pen so that is why it got super wrinkly again. So that is just gonna get ironed out. And then I'm backing each of my little embroideries with a little square of fusible interfacing so that they don't get all messed up from wear over time. I kind of wish I had done this differently. I thought squares would be fine and just the easiest, but you can kind of see them through the fabric, um, which isn't ideal, but it could be worse. So we're just kind of rolling with it. And here's the shot where you can really see them on my dark floor. <laughs> so next we're just gonna pin on that button placket. And obviously I'm doing this for both sides of the skirt, but I thought it would be super repetitive, so I'm only showing you one. And then those get sewn on. So then I ironed the seam allowance in towards that placket and And I ironed it over again, making a crease down the center so that I know how I want it to lay. And then that all gets pinned. Um, I'm tucking the raw edges inwards so that they just barely cover that first line of stitching. Then I'm gonna sew right in the ditch between the two pieces of fabric so that hopefully, if all goes according to plan, the stitching is pretty much invisible. And once again, that gets sewn. So for all my skirt seams, I did French seams, which are kind of a pain in the ass when you have to do pockets as well. It just creates so many extra steps, but I did it. I'm skipping a lot of the steps or else this video would be unnecessarily long. So there's one of the pockets and then I'm just skipping right to the last step of the French seam where it's the last bit because it was too much of a process. I really hate this method, but it is, the only way I know to get the pockets in while also finishing off the edges. So it's what we're gonna do. We gotta suffer for art, okay?
so then I folded over the hem um, I can't remember I just did it by eye and ironed it and then we're just stitching that down And now we can prep the waistband. So I have ironed it so there's a crease down the center and I am using fusible interfacing to give it a little bit of structure, um, but I did not have a big enough piece of fusible interfacing, so it's getting pieced together. Once the waistband is done, we can gather down the top edge. So I'm just using a hand needle, um, contrasting thread, and a running stitch to gather this down by hand. And then we're stitching that on. I'm being very careful going over these pins, even though it doesn't really look like I am. I promise that is what is happening. Um, there was a scare, but luckily no needles were broken in this process. Then using the same method I did with the button plackets, I am finishing off that final edge of the waistband. And then off screen, I sewed on buttons and buttonholes. Thank you so much for watching. I'm actually really proud of how this turned out. I'm surprised that it turned out as well as it did. If you'd like to see more natural dyeing videos, please like and subscribe so I know that that is content that you would be interested in. So if you're interested, make sure you stick around. Okay, bye. It's hot. It's really hot. A few minutes later. Done? Yeah. Oh, it's so cold.